Greetings to all the learners. Welcome to CEC lecture. The topic of analysis is international cooperation and global governance looking at G20 as a specific case study. Dear learners, in this lecture we shall look at the structure, evolution of G20, the important role the various ideas that have been deliberated at various summits of G20, how important they have been with respect to international cooperation and also man with respect to management of global governance dynamics in international relations. In this lecture, we shall elaborate on role and functions of G20. We shall analyze its significance in global governance with special focus on deliberations of previous summits. We shall also elaborate on issues, the debates that are there with respect to the broader framework of international cooperation. International relations, we all know, they uh, talk about states and national interests. When we look at the theoretical perspectives, the realist perspective pointed towards the conflictual side of international reality. The liberal perspective, in contrast to the realist views, points towards cooperation. Now, when we try to debate on international cooperation, intergovernmental forums today are indeed very important in order to address issues of global governance. As we talk about international cooperation and also try to look at it within the bigger framework of global governance, we must understand that dynamics of diplomacy have changed and this points us to the next important aspect that is the context of global politics is multifaceted. Within this, the mechanisms to address Global issues indeed demand attention. Seen in this framework, G20 is indeed very important. What is G20? The group of 20, G20, it is a forum for international cooperation on important issues of global, economic and financial agenda. The G20 was formed in 1999 as a consultation forum between finance ministers and central bank governors of the world's major economies. Following the 2008 economic crisis, it became a forum between heads of state and government which was aimed at improving coordination on main global issues. Now, let us have a look and insight towards the establishment of G20. G20 was formally established in September 1999 when finance ministers and central bank governors of seven major industrial countries which were they? Canada, France, Germany, Italy, Japan, United Kingdom, United States. They met in Washington, D.C. And this is very important to underline that this was in the aftermath of the financial crisis of 1997-1998. Now, two very important insights as we are deliberating on the establishment and the evolution of G20, that is, the vulnerability of the international financial system in context of economic globalization. Related to it is the aspect that is, the key developing countries were insufficiently involved in discussions and decisions concerning global economic issues. Now, seen from this perspective, let us now underline what have been the objectives of G20. 
and we take these objectives from various resources, various news reports of G20 that we got from Ministry of External Affairs website, Government of India, from websites at uh, Russia. So, let us now understand objectives of G20. First is policy coordination between its members in order to achieve global economic stability, sustainable growth. Second, promoting financial regulations that reduce risk and prevent future financial crisis. Third, modernizing international financial architecture. Now, it is very essential to see how the G20 works. G20 brings together finance ministers and central bank governors from 19 countries. Argentina, Australia, Brazil, Canada, China, France, Germany, India, Indonesia, Italy, Japan, the Republic of Korea, Mexico, Russia, Saudi Arabia, South Africa, Turkey, the United Kingdom, United States of America plus the European Union which is represented by President of the European Council and by Head of the European Central Bank. Now let us have a look at how the meetings of G20 have proceeded. The first meeting of the G20 leaders took place in Washington DC and this was on November 14 to 15, 2008. Now herein the leaders agreed for an action plan to stabilize global economy and prevent future crisis. Let us now understand the significance of G20. Once again we get these facts from the website of g20.org. We have taken the data from there. When we look at G20, its members account for more than 80% of world GDP, 75% of global trade and 60% of the population of the planet an important insight with respect to the evolution that is this forum has met every year since 1999 and since 2008 it has included yearly leaders summit with the participation of the respective heads of state and government. In addition to the summit ministerial meetings the Sherpa meetings, what are the Sherpa meetings? That is in charge of carrying out negotiations and building consensus amongst leaders. Working groups and special events are organized throughout the year. Let us now look at how G20 has played an important role with reference to framing of dynamics of global governance. And for that, we shall look at comparative perspectives with respect to the previous three years, important themes coming from the summits of G20. The debates, the de points of deliberation therein will also give us an insight into what are the important stakes with respect to issue of international cooperation. When we look at the themes and previous summits, the 2018, the meeting of the G20 Leaders Summit, this took place in Buenos Aires, Argentina, 10 years after the first G20 Leaders Summit took place in Washington DC. Now this year's theme was very important that is as the theme pointed out and we quote, building consensus for fair and sustainable development for 2018 G20 Leaders Summit and this identified three key issues 
for the agenda. What were they? First, the future of work. Second, infrastructure for development. Third, sustainable food future. Let's have a look at the theme of the G20 2019 summit. The G20 Osaka summit was held on June 28 and 29, 2019. 2019 G20 summit discussed eight themes to ensure global sustainable development. What were these eight themes? We shall now have a look at them. First, global economy. Second, trade and investment. Third, innovation. Fourth, environment and energy. Fifth, employment. Sixth, women empowerment. Seventh, development. And eighth, health. Deliberations on the supply of global commons for realizing global growth such as quality infrastructure and global health were key focus with respect to G20 Osaka 2019 summit. And we get the points of important deliberation from the message by the Japanese Prime Minister in 2019 Shinzo Abe from the Remarks shared by the Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe with respect to G20 2019 Osaka Summit. That is, deliberations on supply of global commons for realizing global growth such as quality infrastructure and global health. Resolving global issues such as climate change and ocean plastic waste. Digital economy from an institutional perspective and issues that arise from an aging society that is introducing Japan's effort including the productivity resolution amid a society 5.0 era towards achieving a society where all individuals are actively engaged. When we took talk about themes and previous summits the 15th meeting of uh, G20 was held on 21st to 22nd November 2020. Now, dear learners, we must point out that originally it was scheduled to take place in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. However, because of the pandemic, the COVID pandemic, the event was held virtually and this was as per a 28th September announcement. This event marked the first time where Saudi Arabia held the presidency of the G20. The theme of the G20 summit in 2020 was the virtual summit, realizing opportunities of the 21st century for all. Now, three key agenda items that were to be addressed under this theme were empowering people by creating conditions in which all people, especially women and youth, can live, work and thrive. Second, safeguarding the planet by fostering collective efforts to protect our global commons. And third, shaping new frontiers by adopting long-term and bold strategies to share benefits of innovation and technological advancement. The group of 20 leaders summit 2021 will convene in October 2020 in Rome, Italy. For 2021, the G20 under the Italian presidency will focus on three broad interconnected pillars of action that is people, planet, prosperity. Now when we look at the future endeavors for G20, namely that Italy holds the G20 presidency in 2021. Saudi Arabia virtually hosted G20 summit in November 2020 and also published Riyadh summit leaders declaration. This is an important document which can be made use of in order to have a deep insight towards the 
working and significance of G20. Indonesia will host G20 in 2022 and India will host G20 in 2023. Now, this discussion on the various themes of previous year's G20 summits gave us an insight about the significance of G20's working, about the important stakes G20 presents with reference to areas of global governance as well as international cooperation. The G20 summit is formally, we all know it's known as the Summit on Financial Markets and the World Economy. We have seen that how as the premier forum for international economic cooperation and we must point out that this was agreed by the leaders at the Pits, uh, Pittsburgh summit in December 2009 representing more than 80% of global GDP the G20 has made continuous efforts towards achieving robust global economic growth. Now, as globalization progresses and various issues become intricately intertwined, we see we have seen as the discussion on previous years summits have presented to us the topics and themes have indeed been varied, multifaceted, related to issues of contemporary global governance. The recent G20 summits have focused not only therefore on the macro economy and trade but also on wide range of global issues which have an immense impact on the global economy such as development, climate change, energy, health, counter-terrorism as well as migration and refugees. Trade and we have seen that how through these deliberations the G20 has definitely made an attempt to try for an inclusive and sustainable world through its contributions towards resolving global issues. Now, let's take some inputs from some of the important academic work with reference to issues of global economy, global governance, international cooperation, which definitely shall have a bearing on the further research papers, on the answers that we can present with reference to significance and working of G20. We have this very important work by Dirk Messner and Silke Venish that is Global Cooperation and the Human Factor in International Relations, the book published by Routledge in 2015. Now in this book, there are some very important arguments that is no doubt cooperation is advantageous but cooperation has its limits too. This book argues for new interdisciplinary approach to global cooperation research. It points out towards global we identities by describing basic cooperation mechanisms that are valid across disciplines or by bringing an evolutionary perspective to diplomacy. Another important work that actually presents to us certain insights into how does the mechanism of international cooperation or international diplomatic agenda actually goes forward. We take For this we take reference to the work by Helen V. Milner, Interests, Institutions and Informations, Domestic Politics and International Relations. The book is from Princeton University Press 2020. That is the major important argument of this book that is any explanation that treats states as unitary actors is ultimately misleading. The book presents an argument that is all states are polyarchic where decision making power is shared between two or more actors. What is essential that we must look at the important factors and what are they? Interaction of the domestic actors preferences given their political institutions, levels of information. This is what defines when international cooperation is possible and what its terms will be. 
another important work by Jennifer Sterling Fokker that is Theories of International Cooperation and Primacy of Anarchy Explaining US International Monetary Policy Making After Bretton Woods. Now, in this book, this very important argument that we can use for the purpose of our further research that is international cooperation. And the book works on realist and constructivist insights and it places that the state rather than the market as the center of analysis. States and not markets should be the center of analysis while attempting to explain international cooperation. So, dear learners, we all can see that today the world is confronted by risk of complexity of global challenges. No doubt there is a need for intensive as well as extensive approach at international cooperation and coordination by national governments. Seen in this perspective, G20 is indeed a very useful forum. Over a period of time, it has addressed issues that have not only bearing with reference to economy and macroeconomic processes, but also with reference to technology, climate change, health, issues of global governance that have a bearing with respect to domestic policy as well as international realms. We hope the lecture presented to you significant inputs and insights. We look forward to positive, encouraging feedback. Thank you very much. <laughs>